live from the Mandalay Convention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada. It's The Cube at IBM Insight 2014. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Las Vegas. This is theCUBE here at IBM Insight in Las Vegas, live in the Social Lounge. I'm John Furrier, co-founder of SiliconANGLE Media. I'm John, the other co-founder of SiliconANGLE Media, Dave Vellante, the SiliconANGLE Mookie Bomb. With theCUBE, our flagship program, we go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. Our next guest is Jim Green, CTO of the Data and Analytics Business Unit at Cisco. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Uh, thanks for coming on, we appreciate it. Um, Internet of Things seems to be the hottest thing going around these days. It's just like, all of a sudden, boom, it's on every press uh, coverage, cover stories, uh, trade journalism, New York Times, Wall Street Journal, mainstream media, really picking up on a steam on the Internet of Things. Not a new concept for the folks in the industry. We've been looking at technical papers for going past a decade with data, but certainly now with mobile infrastructure uh, and big data, it's hot. So, I got to get your, your first question on. Uh, where do you see the current Internet of Things going? How, do you think it's crossed over from machines and data centers, or do you think we've now crossed over into the more of the mobile, personal space? Well, it is absolutely true that the Internet of Things, or IoT, is the hottest thing going. The number of press articles around IoT has increased tenfold over the past 12 months. And so you have to ask yourself, is this uh, a temporary situation? Is it uh, some uh, sort of fad or is it lasting? Uh, and frankly, I believe it's lasting. And the reason that the press has really picked up on it, the reason that the industry has picked up on it, is that unlike some of the other things that we've looked at over the years in technology, IoT has a solid economic basis behind it. Uh, it is quite straightforward to look at a building and to figure out how to reduce its energy consumption by 20%. It is quite straightforward to look at traffic congestion in a city and figure out how to reduce the carbon emissions by 10 or 20 percent. Um, there is a lot of uh, energy savings that can be taken um, into effect if you can automate parking. There is a lot of emergency response uh, activities that we can improve by city infrastructure management. Um, we can get more oil out of the ground. Uh, we can actually automate our automobiles uh, and make for a higher quality experience in terms of transportation. Lots of really interesting things. So we see certainly the, on the economic side, I had a chance to interview the CEO of GE, um, Jeffrey M. Elton. You know, they have customers like United Airlines that a 1% increase is billions of dollars. Um, we were at a recent event where, um, I think it was uh, Tableau or Splunk, I can't remember which one it was, where just, you know, a very small business, but they serve the, the locomotive, uh, you know, the, the railroad um, industry. And the savings are in the billions. Just, you know, what looks like small data is astronomical business value. I mean, it's literally off the chart changing how businesses are organizing. Um, now, that's on one end. Now, there's also the technology end, how they, route the data, you guys are routing companies. So talk about that dynamic around the, the transformative business outcomes and then how that relates to IT infrastructure. Well, there's, uh, there's many different uh, IoT markets. It's going to be segmented by vertical as we've indicated so far. But on a macro scale, um, you have the consumer oriented market with uh, the automated home, with the wearables, uh, with the Fitbit uh, bracelets, et cetera. And then you have the enterprise, uh, commercial, or industrial market. Uh, generally speaking, uh, the researchers are saying that the consumer market will take off first because high volume, low price devices will. However, by about 2017 to 2018, the enterprise or the industrial market uh, will, will be bigger, uh, both in terms of uh, the number of devices as well as in terms of the dollar amount of the total market. Now, you have problems with this enterprise or this commercial business that you don't have in the, uh, in the individual basis and that the amount of data is massive. We're seeing lots of projects where we're going to have over a trillion bytes of data generated every day. Uh, and therefore, it actually changes the way computing has to be done. Uh, we've done uh, quite a bit of work on this and determined that it actually turns things upside down. For example, uh, in today's world in analytics, 
you always grab your data in a repository. Out of that population of data, you extract a representative sample, and then you do some analysis on it. In IoT, we're going to have so much data that we won't be able to actually store it all. Therefore, we're going to have to analyze it prior to storage. In other words, it's a reversal. It's analyzed before you, before you put it to base. So there's going to be uh, a, a number of different steps in this process. The devices and their controllers and the sensors generating data, there will be communications and networking to actually communicate the data to where it needs to go. We're going to have to do this edge processing so that you can actually filter, reduce, aggregate, and do the initial analysis of data. You'll then have to store it in some sort of a storage system, perhaps databases, perhaps big data. And then finally, you'll be able to have applications that act on it and analyze it. So as a result of this, the implications to put together an architecture or a model for IoT are much uh, more uh, required in the enterprise space. Recently, IBM and Cisco and others have collaborated to put together uh, a reference model uh, for IoT. Uh, and it was presented a couple weeks ago at the IoT World Forum. And so we now have a model for how all of this fits and how all these components relate to each other to use as a guide and as a reference as we start to build large scale systems uh, that do complicated things. Wow, I mean there's a lot in what you just said. So you're, you're now talking about analysis before you persist the data, so that implies real time. Mm -hmm. um, and you talked about sampling, so is sampling sort of a dead concept? I wonder if we could, we could start there and then get into it a little bit. Well, I think we need to take the step of analytics and break it down into multiple uh, activities. Um, first, let's take a trivial example. You've got uh, a building management system. The set point is at 71 degrees. You take the temperature, it's 70.5. You're not going to turn on the heater. Um, and so, why move that data around? Why not uh, discard that data? Uh, because there's no action to be taken on it. So at the first level, you're going to have to filter what data is important, what data is not important. Secondly, you're going to have to normalize that data so the data coming from a variety of different places can look like uh, it came from one place so it's easy to work with. Then some data is now going to have to be persisted, put into a database. Um, still, even after their data reduction, you're going to have too much data, so you will have sampling as you pull a small set of the data out and then you'll do your analytics uh, using uh, the variety of analytics tools in the market today uh, in much the same way as you do today. But the generation and the treatment of that data with IoT is way different than it is the way things work today. How, how do you expect to determine in this model, this IoT reference model, which data to persist? How is that decision made? Is that automated? Are there humans involved in making that decision? Well, there's some people who, um, who use the term IOE, and, um, and while we're still, <laughs> Everybody's got the, def the definitions, uh, you know, slightly <laughs> different. <laughs> Your corporate marketing people like to use that term. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> but in general, IOE encompasses the idea of people as well as inanimate objects, and so people and collaboration. And it's those people who have to a priori say, I'm a geologist sitting in Houston, we're drilling for oil off the coast of Africa. Um, there's not enough bandwidth to get all of that data back here, so today I want to look at this subset. Um, I want uh, the instrumentation to collect this portion of the data because it's the stage in drilling that, that where this data is interesting. Therefore, the people will determine what gets stored and what gets communicated and what gets analyzed. And that, so that's some kind of policy that then gets injected and automated throughout the, that's right. the infrastructure? That's right, yes. Uh, so a part of an IoT system is that the people have to say, this is what I want to have happen and then the system actually takes care of it. You know, again, going back to our simple example of building management, you turn the thermostat, you're basically changing the policy. But there's so much data. So how can the system, how can the reference model, I'm sure you thought this through, help me figure out what my policy should be? I don't even know what, what questions to ask sometimes. So there's <laughs> so much data, as you said. Yeah. So how, how does that loop get I'm, closed? I'm afraid the technology can't tell the people <laughs> what the policy should be. <laughs> oh, oh no. <laughs> no, there has to be some sort of human intelligence that to actually control the entire system. But, but um, th there are cases where um, uh, it is good for the devices uh, to act somewhat independently. For example, if you know, you're in a car wreck, 
you kind of want your OnStar system or whatever system is put in future cars to kind of take over because you may be incapacitated. Similarly, uh, we're going to put telephone chips in pacemakers. Um, and so if you have a bad heart, you fall down, um, you may not be able to dial 911. And so uh, there's a case where you know, the emergency response can be done on your behalf. There's tons of examples. But in general, what we're seeing is a whole new world. You know, we, you know, we did the emails and browsing, we did the e-commerce sites, we did the social networking and the Twitters and the Facebooks. Now, the next generation is IoT, IOE, the intersection of things and people in a much more intelligent fashion than anything that we've ever seen before. You mentioned some, some of the tension, the pressures at the edge. Uh, historically, the, the network has been very hierarchical. There's obviously, everybody talks about traffic moving from north-south to east-west. Mm -hmm. uh, what's Cisco's perspective on that, and how does it relate to the sort of traditional IT network infrastructure? Are they two different worlds? Is there ways in which we can leverage that? Is Cisco sort of accelerating that move to the edge? I wonder if you could talk about the networking implications. Yes, no, we're absolutely accelerating that to the edge. And at the same time, um, we're, uh, uh, we're complementing that uh, with uh, work at the center. Uh, the cloud is going to be a huge aspect of, of IoT and IOE, and IBM is, you know, is very interested in the cloud, as is Cisco. And so both of us are saying, the data center may not be the right place for a lot of this data. We grab the data from the devices, we do the processing at the edge, we move it across the network um, into the cloud, uh, and, and the trick is to figure out how to make all of those different aspects harmonious. The, the big thing for Cisco is that we're obviously excellent at the network, and the network is in the middle of IoT, and so how do we expand upward in the cloud, downward into the edge, and then horizontally so that we have interoperability across all the devices uh, and all the different vendors. People say, you know, data is the new oil, data is the new source of competitive advantage. Some people say, no, it's how you apply the data and differentiate that's the new source of competitive advantage. Whatever, if you know, this world is really data driven, data becomes this you know, potential source of value. Who owns the data in IoT? <laughs> I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> <laughs> the, Everybody wants to own the data. Right? Yes. Well, you know, you're going to establish a system, and that system is going to generate data. And so it's the person who, or the organization who sets up the system. And there's going to be a lot, there already is a lot of interest in city infrastructure management, which has to do with parking, traffic congestion, or emergency response. Uh, uh, lighting as well as um, as uh, garbage collection. And so the cities will own that data. Um, in a building such as what we said here, the owner of the building will have the data. Uh, but then there will be other scenarios um, that cross uh, various categories where the data will flow for, you know, for, for uh, the assistance of some population and the data will be shared. Just give an example, you know, the pacemaker with the telephone. Um, uh, the individual who owns a pacemaker might own that data, but he wants that data transmitted to the emergency response mm -hmm. team. Um, and so, so there will be lots of, of, of gray zones. It, it, it's, it is going to be a challenge to automate and yet retain privacy, and it's another matter that we're actually uh, really studying a lot. So we uh, we can't go a minute without bringing in a sports analogy. So I'm going to bring in the World <laughs> Series because it's you know, a Giants fan. I'm a Red Sox fan by by nature, but 15 years in Palo Alto, mm -hmm. I've come converted because they get some good vibe. It's very Red Sox like in the West Coast way. Yeah, and, and <laughs> I'm not going to go any further. I could get, get myself in trouble. Um, You're already in trouble. Not there's anything wrong with that at all, Dave. <laughs> um, but I got to ask you, you know, the Kansas City Royals are like, got great pitching, the Giants are scrappy. So in he chooses those on stage talking about roles of people. So let's bring the, the World Series dynamic into the people who really want to make a change and win with big data. That's the practitioners out there who are making changes. They're the ones who see virtualization. They see north, south, east, west network packet. They understand virtualization. They understand the mobile infrastructure, perimeter security. These are threshold issues right now in our, in our moment uh, in tech, this tech transformation. So, 
The Royals had good pitching, the Giants get down, but they scrap back. And it's, it's about their mindset, really. They look at the Giants, this was on, you know, on talk radio going on, great conversation around. Their mindset and how they approach every game gives them that edge. So if I'm a practitioner, what approach should I take given the fact that there's some good pitching to stop me from implementing this new, uh, new way? Because a lot of people don't like the change, especially in large enterprises. Like change, ah, let's see a POC, a lot of debate, but a lot of people saying, let's just move quickly to this new normal of modern infrastructure. Yeah. What mindset and what approach should that practitioner take? Well, I, I think the mindset we all should take is change is inevitable, but there are so many different types of analytics around professional baseball, it's ridiculous. First off, you know that the guys are in overdrive right now as, as the, everybody moves from San Francisco back to Kansas City trying to analyze uh, the strategy for the next game. Um, there's also the people who actually own uh, the stadium and the franchise. How do you move people through the turnstile um, quickly? How do you organize parking? How do you handle the traffic once the game is over? Tons of analytics in order to actually improve the quality of the experience. Um, we're seeing analytics applied uh, with the replay, which we now have in professional baseball, a whole new uh, scenario. Um, and also, if you think about it, what's, you know, the excitement of the game is to be in the moment, but do you leave one thing behind when you leave home, and that is the instant replay. Yet we all have video devices that we carry with us, and so we're now seeing, you know, data moving off the field into the studio, into Verizon, and your carriers onto your phone, so that you can actually have, you know, the experience of watching it live and then immediately seeing the replay. But but then, you know, on a on a more commercialized basis, um, a lot of revenue comes from the concessions. Um, the food stands, et cetera, in the stadium. Dynamic pricing, pricing based on wins and losses, that right. sentiment. I That's mean, right. essentially baseball's interesting because if you look at what, how progressive they are, they have a really hard challenge. They have to manage their club. Yes. They have to manage their organization, which is the employees, yes. and all the dynamic pricing, profit and loss, and the fan experience. That right. is what enterprises need to do, right? I mean, they have fans, that's fan experience called customers. <laughs> well, and you know, the, the net of all of this is that baseball is 100 years old, and yet it gets more exciting to go to a baseball game every year. Uh, because of all of this combined, uh, just, uh, in, you know, enriches uh, the personal experience. Lessons for IT out of that. So let's extract some signal out of that analogy because it's really relevant, mm -hmm. and I think, you know, certainly, they're under scrutiny. I mean, baseballs, you got the crowdsourcing aspect of the truth in the crowds. I mean, everyone's watching, so the speculation, so they're harnessing the data from the crowd. Yeah. They're harnessing the data from all their databases. So what's the lesson for IT? Well, just speed, just building a dynamic system. For example, uh, the cash registers are telling the computers throughout the course of the game how many hot dogs are being sold. Um, and it's absolutely true that real-time advertising can trigger increased sales. And so at the seventh inning stretch, you need to know what to put up on a billboard. Um, very real time, very dynamic, uh, in order to actually get the maximum revenue uh, out, of the, out of the experience, and also uh, to enable the fans to actually know, you know what's out there, uh, what can I do to make my day better. So this is beyond Moneyball, so we should do a segment on this uh, after the show, Dave, with Cisco in particular, because Jim McHugh, Cube alumni, manages the MLB relationship. It might not be known out there, but Cisco provides MLB with all the gear for their stadiums and all the different teams, so I know you guys are close to it, but this is beyond Moneyball, because that, that convergence, the confluence between you know, team, organization, fan experience, is an overlay for what an enterprise could do because it's not just about IT rolling stuff out, it's about the business owners inside the company to deliver on all three of those objectives. Every major league stadium has miles of networking in the stadium, uh, lots of networking devices, um, again, uh, advertisement, big displays, concessions, lots going on electronically around the baseball game. Jim, I got to ask you, uh, relationship with IBM, you guys, uh, with UCS, been tr sort of transforming the server business. Mm -hmm. IBM just sold its x86 business, so that opens up a whole potential set of collaborations between IBM and Cisco. Uh, coincidence, cause and effect, what's the relationship with IBM you know, today and going forward? Well, Cisco and IBM are major partners and have been for a number of years. Mm -hmm. um, each of us um, sells a ton of stuff to the other and buys a ton of stuff from, from the other. 
And so there's a strong economic ties for us to figure out how to go into the market to coexist so that we can provide a better computing experience for our combined customers. Now, uh, from time to time, uh, we make some moves which make things better or make things worse. IBM selling off their small computer uh, arm actually opens up the uh, opportunity for both of us to, to base more of our systems on UCS. But IoT also is an opportunity. Mm. IoT is an early market. Uh, and, uh, and so in the course of time, uh, I've come to know the IBM folks uh, and, uh, and work with the IBM folks. And as I said before, we're working together in standards bodies, we're working together you know, at industry consortiums. We're on stage with each other as, as, as happening today um, and happened a couple weeks ago. Uh, and so we're trying to promote the industry. We're trying to get the industry to actually move forward and leverage what is possible in a way that benefits all of us. Right, and others potentially in the ecosystem, like I said, it's early days, it's a very complicated ecosystem, and uh, one that we're following, John. Okay, Jim, closely. really appreciate you coming on. I love, I mean, I can talk about MLB and big data because I really think that what's going on in sports really is a, is a predictive aspect, and uh, we can bring some cognitive analysis team to that uh, conversation and have fun with it. This is theCUBE, we'll be back with our next guest, and we're live here in Las Vegas, and IBM's doing something really special this year with social VIPs. They're handing out the, these uh, awesome badges. And what they're doing is really bringing the crowd into the conversation. They're bringing in crowd chats. There's a crowd chat at 12 o'clock, crowdchat.net slash IBM Insight with Brian Fonzo and Carla, uh, data nerd. And it's a thought leader, it's organic. It's an unconference within the conference. It's a special digital experience called Insight Go. We're glad to be a part of it. And you got this little badge here called VIP Social Influences. They're bringing a whole new level of experience here at IBM Insight. Awesome, uh, great, great crew here. So we're happy to be a part of it. We'll be right back with more analysis and conversations here on theCUBE after this short break. <laughs>